we'll now take a look at ordinate dimensioning. Uh, this dimensioning process uses XY coordinates uh, as locations of features as opposed to an actual linear dimension from point A to point B. Um, it'll make more sense as we work our way through the dimensioning process. But what we would do, similar to baseline dimensioning, we'd start with a point of origin at what we would consider to be zero, zero, and go and give x directions and y directions from that same zero, zero point, uh, and therefore create sort of a matrix so that we can locate points in an x direction and then also in a y direction uh, to locate. It could be the center of a hole, it could be the end point of an object any feature that we really need aside from radius, diameter, uh, those sorts of things. So the way you uh, start the command is, and I'm going to show you a couple of tricks in here as well. On the home tab, if you go to the dimensioning tools, you'll see second from the bottom, you'll see ordinate. Uh, so you can get to it there. And of course on the annotate tab, same thing, it's going to be, you know, for whatever reason on the annotate tab, it's actually reversed and ordinate is the last one on the list. So. However you get there is the ordinate command. This little flyout image is a good uh, example of what we're doing, which is the same reason I, I chose the object that I drew, just a simpler version of it. Um, you can see on the bottom left on this little image we're looking at, uh, the bottom left hand corner is zero, zero. In other words, that's my point of origin, so that's what we're going to start with. And then as you work your way across in the x direction, you can see 0 0.6, 2.1, 5.3, so on and so forth. And what's happening is these locations, sorry, uh, these locations in the x direction are simply that, an x distance from zero. So the center line of that top hole um, on this little image we're looking at, the center line is 0.6 in the x direction from the bottom left hand corner. The center lines of the next two holes over is 2.1x, so 2.1 to the right from the bottom left hand corner so on and so forth, and then the same thing uh, from the bottom left hand corner up. The center lines of the first two holes is 1.4 units up and in the y direction from zero, zero. And so it's just a way of taking a center point of a hole in this, in this case and saying, okay, the first hole that I come to on the, uh, towards the bottom of the, the plate there is 2.1 over in the x direction and then 1.4 up in the y direction. So if I cross those two distances, 2.1 and 1.4, where they cross, where they form an intersection, that's where the center point of my first hole is. And so that's the whole point of ordinate dimension. It just uses coordinates instead of linear, and it uses the zero, zero point, wherever that may be. Um, it could, doesn't have to be the bottom left-hand corner. It just happens to be in this example, and that's also what we're going to use. So if I choose the ordinate tool, it's going to be very simple as far as how you use it, but we're going to look at a problem here in just a second. It says specify feature location. So we're going to assume bottom left hand corner will be our zero, zero point. So that'd be my first feature location. So I just click on that endpoint, and as soon as I do, it's going to ask me to drag that dimension. When I'm dragging it, two things. One, first of all, obviously it doesn't say zero, zero. We're going to address that in just a second. Um, but as I move it, I have ortho off, and so as I move this, you can see I can drag it as far down as I want, as far up as I want, uh, left, right, whatever, and when I do, it's going to attach that leader to it and make it bend, so that's one way to do it. If I turn ortho on, it locks it in, in this case, to a vertical. If I pull it over here, lock it into a horizontal, so that's how I'd make this straight, take ortho off, I can add a little angled leader to it. Um, so if I wanted to place this, I just pull it down where I wanted to, and then left click again, and I have my first dimension. <clears throat> now the problem, obviously, we see right off the bat, and if I put another one off of the bottom left hand corner, you can see this is not zero zero. So the question is, okay, well, how do I make that zero zero uh, as my start point? Uh, the simple way to do that is just to click on your XY axis icon, uh, and you can see this. Zero, 00 origin right here has a square grip which means that I can click on it and move it. Uh, if you hover over it it says move and align, move origin, world. And you can do any, if you use move origin only uh, what that'll do is it'll allow you to move it from the origin point zero, 00 or you can just left click on it and grab it. And as soon as I left click on it and grab that icon I'm moving it. 
So wherever I relocate it, that then becomes my new zero zero point temporarily. And so what I'd want to do would be to click on it, grab it, and move it to whatever point it is I want to lo uh, label as zero zero. So if it's the bottom left hand corner, I would just move it to that O snap of the endpoint right there. Now I have my origin moved to that point, so now it is zero zero. So now when I go back and do an ordinate dimension, and I locate this endpoint, it's going to show up as zero. Choose that endpoint again with an ordinate dimension, zero. So now it is showing up at zero zero because I moved my origin, my XY origin, to that point. And that's how you would you would do that. Once you get that start, once you get this done, we get all the dimensions on here, we can move it and, and everything will be okay. But while I'm dimensioning this, that XY origin needs to stay right there at the beginning point of zero, zero. So it needs to stay there for the time being. And now, every time I hit ordinate dimension tool, I just hit the next point. So when I hit this center point, I'd pull it down. Hit this center point, pull it down, and you can see it's giving it dimensions based on that point's distance from zero. So this is 6.5 units over from zero, 3.5, 1.5. And that's what I would do, and I would just keep doing that until I got to the very end. Okay, and then I'd want to do the same thing going up. So from here, what's my first point? That I want to give a dimension to it would be this one all the way across to the right. That's the first one that I come to in the y direction. This one would be the second one I come to in the y direction. And you want to make sure that it's locking on to the right point, which would be the center point. So then you pull it over. Center point, pull it over. End point, pull it over. And you can see there's no magic bullet when it comes to lining these things up. Uh, the best thing you can do is draw you a line vertically and horizontally and just try to get them to line up as, as best you can you can see I'm off on these here a little bit so I'd want to pull those back till they lined up with that point <clears throat> and just try to get them uniform <clears throat> and so that would be my ordinate dimension starting with this is zero zero and going across all the way again hitting all the features that I need to reference uh, and, and going from there. Now I may want to come back or I may even want to do it beforehand. Put center marks in here in which case if I put the center marks in I may want to take the actual dimension pull it back to where I have my, my gaps in here like I, I would like to have when I dimension. I want the gaps between the center marks and the extension lines. Uh, but that's the ordinate dimensioning process. Now I can take this icon, click on it, either hover over it or right click either one, and select world. That'll send it back, send it back to its original position, its world coordinate system position. And you can see all these are the same. Okay, uh, they're not going to change as long as you don't fool with them. But since I've sent my origin back to its original zero zero point, the world coordinate system, if I were to pull another ordinate dimension from the same point now it would be different because it's referencing this as zero zero so that's why it needs to stay at the zero zero point for your particular object until you're finished and now when you're looking at options inside of here there's no options to start with it just says specify location but once I pick a point I've actually got a few options down here. I can X datum, Y datum, I can put in M text, regular text, or I can put in an angle. So after I pick the point, I want to show you a couple of options. Uh, if I wanted to put in text instead of a number, I would just come down here before I place it. Uh, I can come down here and choose M text or text, or hit my down arrow and choose M text or text. And once I choose it, it'll let me put in text before, text after, or just overwrite the text altogether, or the number altogether, and then place that. Uh, again, by using the text option, same thing, I just won't have the opportunity to use my text editor if I use the regular text option. Uh, if I locate it as an X datum, 
it will just allow me to use that as a datum point. And you can see it's putting it only in the x direction. It doesn't matter where I pull my cursor, it's locating it as an x. It's not changing the text at all, so I could use it as a y. It's always going to be an x datum. Um, or I could do the other. I could select this point, choose the option to go y. Again, I hit the down arrow to get these options, or I can come down here and choose it. If I choose Y, it's always going to be Y, no matter where I pull it. It's not going to deviate from Y at all. Okay, And then the only other option that I have from this point is to put it at an angle. So if I wanted to, I could specify the angle of the dim dimension text, type that in, hit enter, and it would just angle the text. So there's nothing magic about that or hard it's just it angles the text when you put it in